presentation earlier in 2016, which um, received over 1,000 responses. And that consultation was based on some conceptual ideas around a West Orbital bus link either on the M11 or um, off the M11, either to the east or west. This report um, summarises uh, the key outcomes from the consultation. Um, it's supported by a further <coughs> detailed document which is um, available as a, a background document which details um, the full consultation responses. Um, in addition to that, the report sets out the um, proposed next steps for, for the project and it, it, it focuses around the key um, strategic issues which inform the project, which are in particular the ongoing development of the Cambridge to Cambridge scheme and the need to ensure that the two schemes are fully um, cognizant of each other. The, um, the particular issues around the M11 in terms of uh, the future plans of Highways England on that corridor. Um, and also the aspirations are particularly um, set out um, on the separate report around uh, short, shorter term interventions at Junction 11, um, which, which, could, which could have a material impact on the Western Orbital. Um, so uh, really that, that summarises the, the content of the report. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Hull. Um, if you're happy, uh, Councillor Dick, that I was going to take the log of the A's on forum first and then just yeah, so um, um, if you could come up, Helen and uh, Councillor Smith, uh, that would be great. So, as in the notes that I've got here, um, there were five issues raised in relation to the Western Orbital. So, if we, what, if we took them one at a time and uh, had a discussion about each of them. <coughs> Or do you, want to, do you want to go through all five in, and then we can just have an open discussion? Oh, do you mean in the report that we gave to the Joint Assembly? So I've got a report of your meeting of the 1st of, well, a statement to the Joint Assembly of the 1st of December. Okay. So uh, I don't know if, if that, is that the structure that's useful? It's just that the board has got those five issues in front of them. We don't want to rehash yeah. everything we went through the assembly because it was quite a long presentation yeah. and Councillor Hickford was very tolerant. So actually what we've done is we've kind of um, summar summarised it in a much, uh, to bring out the, sort of the key points. So, so in, in terms of the one to five points, yeah. Okay. So but certainly what, what we would want to do is as a board look at each of the points in sequence, yeah. So, well, if, uh, so um, Helen was going to talk about the sort of more generic things, and I was going to talk a bit about the parking rides. So, can we? Would you mind if we kind of did it as we planned, and then? Okay. We... And you do do, um, and I'll see how that struck fits in with what we're reading. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Actually, we do need a, a procedure for that, don't we? Because um, no one can ever We do need a procedure for that, don't we? You know what we give to the. Joint assembly, whether or not we then come here and get your responses, or whether we're giving something yeah. different, and how Roger fits into that. Okay, so this is you know, something. Well, we certainly, I've, I've got some responses in front of me in terms of some of the things that we have looked at. Yeah, uh, Mr. Beams, let's say not help. We we committed at the assembly to way we get response yeah. to the questions, and that's what we've done. But it was useful to do that for Okay, and are we sharing that? Mm -hmm. Well, we yeah, so, so you've got a copy of the responses to the, the five issues. Thank you. Councillor Hickman wants to contribute as well. Yeah, thank you. It was just to say that's, that's why I like the LNF to go first in these instances because it saves duplication. Um, so thank you. I'll try not to duplicate whatever you're going to say. So am I saying what I was going to say? I, I, would, think, I would think so, because some of the responses we had satisfied with us, so we're trying to make it simpler for you. Go for it. I could have done it by now. Yes. <laughs> Um, uh, to debate and respond to it. 
but instead we plan to meet on the 17th of January um, and we'll circulate a full statement of our discussions and the resolutions passed immediately following it. And as always, we would like, even though it hasn't coincided with this meeting, that our recommendations have given due consideration in shaping the preferred options. So recommendation one, um, we would like two weeks between the publication of reports and the joint assembly meeting to plan and hold an LF meeting. This will give members time to consult colleagues, gather relevant local knowledge and formulate well-considered recommendations before uh, key decisions are taken. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying for a minute that the, our recommendations were not well-considered, well but they were rushed, and so it's just more sensible to the same time. Um, so that's an additional recommendation that came out of our discussions with the Joint Assembly. So we're not going to talk about specifics so much today, but instead we want to raise more general points relevant to the Western Orbital and its interconnection with the A428 scheme. <coughs> So, as we know, the A428 and Western Orbital schemes are closely interlinked, and if the fundamental aim is to make housing with employment sites, one really doesn't work without the other, um, and particularly we think the A428 without the Western Orbital. Um, so, we certainly can support um, recommendation 8 um, to paragraph 2 on page 2 of the next steps report. So, recommendation 2 would be that the LLF would like the A428 and Western Orbital schemes henceforth viewed as one project and considered together. But how will these schemes interconnect though? Um, with the selection of 3A as the preferred option for the a 4 a scheme, the options are more limited. Since Highways England would not allow the new bridge to have a sit road it being too close to the current junction 13, the off-road buses would presumably have to double back to the current sit road on Madingley Road to get onto the Western Orbital. By contrast, an on-road Camborne to Cambridge busway would co connect directly and therefore we feel more logically. And the LLF um, has consistently supported options that make better use of existing infrastructure, on-road options. Virtually all the benefits of off-road could be delivered, we think, for a fraction of the cost and options are not limited for interconnecting the two schemes. Um, so as regards the Western Orbital, Whilst the LLF can see the benefits of the on-road Western Orbital, with bus only sit lanes and linking the northwest and West Cambridge sites to the biomedical campus, members do not believe sufficient evidence has been provided on projected usage and commercial viability to justify the expense and environmental impact of an off-road solution, especially in light of recent national evidence of reducing numbers of bus users. So our recommendation 3A um, is, is that if the Western Orbital Scheme is taken forward, the LLF recommends that an on-road option only be pursued. As regards the A428, one of the reasons we asked the Joint Assembly last week to agree that a full assessment be made of the LLF's hybrid route, one that makes better use of existing infrastructure, was that it could link and would link directly with the Western Orbital um, via Junction 13 Bridge. We consider it a major omission, and I'm sure Roger, if he's going to make a presentation on this, um, will um, we'll go into more detail. But we consider it a major omission that no valid segregated or partially segregated option that makes better use of existing infrastructure has ever been assessed. Certainly wasn't one of the five that, that we ended up with. The one that was assessed, the option one, um, which did use existing infrastructure, was actually not an option at all, because it did not meet the fundamental requirement of the project, namely it had to be segregated or partially segregated, and it contained misinformation and misleading comparisons, um, which I laid out to the Joint Assembly, which I'm not going to lay out again. So recommendation 3B, we would like a full appraisal of the hybrid A428 solution proposed by the LLF, including transparent evaluation of strategic fit, benefit to cost ratio, and wider economic benefits. In fact, I've just asked Atkins for this um, at the meeting we just had with them um, uh, and the officers, but they said that has to come from you. They can't, they, 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 they can't just go and do it. So. Um, that's fundamentally what we would like. Because we believe our option would actually be a better strategic <coughs> um, Anyway, the Junction 13 M11 bridge is potentially a crucial.
crucial element in the interconnection of the two schemes. Um, and many of you will be aware of the uh, press coverage of this topic this week. So I'm not going to go to the issue again, but I'm going to make three recommendations. Um, so recommendation 4A, that the LLF asks the executive board to note that key information was misrepresented or not disclosed that was relevant to the feasibility of solutions that make use of existing road infrastructure. Recommendation 4B, the LLF requests that an investigation be carried out into whether the new information contained in the Atkins Report of May 2016, had it been known earlier, would have had a material effect on the options assessed and therefore ultimate decisions taken. And recommendation 4C, um, the LLF asks the board to provide assurance that all relevant information relating to both the A408 and the Western Nautical schemes has now been disclosed. Indeed, we ask that all Atkins report, reports are now made public, please. Do, do you want to make any response to that before I just do my little bit about the park and ride, or do you want me to? Well, I mean, we're here to discuss the Western Orbit, so this is my first. Well, this is in relation. So, um, in terms of, I mean, I, I haven't seen any notification of this information at all that's coming from the LLF. So, uh, we can be sort of delighted with the. the it's virtually um, exactly what the Joint Assembly were given um, last week. So, do you not get the report that we sent to Greg Watts? Which? So, who gets that then? The Atkins report referred to me was um, actually published on the website um, and as part of the technical backgrounds to the report that went in October was actually clarified. I think the, uh, I believe the reference is to the phase one report. The rep two. Directory Farm Bridge Report. Oh, the Directory Farm Bridge Report um, has been made available. That's the Junction 13 Bridge. And that was published back in June. It was made available to the Euro. I'm going to go and check if it's on the website if not, I'm not sure it's available by the time. Councillor Burkett on the Atkins Report? No, no, something else. Okay, well, and, and is, is there anything else to be said about the Atkins Report? Because my understanding was that you, you have had the Atkins report and it was factored into the analysis that you produced. That's correct, yeah. Um, that's correct. Um, basically, the, the options as set out did provide at the high strategic level um, different levels of service provision. In terms of the uh, Junction 13 issue, um, there were some assumptions made around the bus priority, levels of bus priority, through that in terms of journey time impacts. Um, so in, in fact that reflects the fact that, that you, can, you can get bus priority over the bridge using existing infrastructure. Um, what, wasn't, what wasn't considered was the cost of adding um, on an additional lane, which would still only be an eastbound lane into the city centre. So the only change would be um, an additional cost onto the um, scheme because of um, all of the options discussed in the report about Junction 13, you talk about additional cost. Uh, the assumption made in the report was presented to yourself in October was that buses would have priority over the bridge using a bus gate. So in fact there would be no um, operational difference between that and a, um, an eastbound bus bus line. So it wouldn't change the basis of your decision. So I, I, um, I, I need to focus here, um, Helen, on the issue in front of us, which is the Western Orbital. Um, so in terms of some of the points you've raised, um, we'll come back obviously in the discussion about on-road and off-road on the Western Orbital. Um, uh, we will um, clearly uh, have a discussion when Councillor Smith contributes about park and ride locations, um, and we'll have a, a discussion also about the connectivity of it um, and then in terms of the viability issues we're, we're not here to discuss the viability of the A428 route we're here to discuss 
the issues relating to the Western Orbital. Um, so that, that's what we'll focus on. Um, Councillor Hickford. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I also um, separated the, the Western Orbital before today um, as, as issues. But I really want to come in on points of clarity because obviously in public questions, we all get a copy of public questions. But when an LLF reports, is there not a copy of the report in front of the board? Because we don't necessarily get it in front of us at the assembly, but obviously we can answer at the assembly, but then I thought a copy of any report from an LLF will come before the board. Can I have on that, please? Well, I, I would expect if there was a report from uh, that had been submitted on the Western Orbital that would have been shared. But I'm, all I'm speaking on behalf of is the, is the board members, and we haven't seen the, this other than the fact that we've got the issue summarised. Um, uh, because what we've got is a detailed note of the assembly discussion that took place. So that's where we have the LLF's points about each of these issues, but in a different format. Mm -hmm. So we, we have the issues, they're not in the same order. Mr. Chairman, if I may, that, that was my point, that we've got the minutes from the assembly, yeah. which obviously refer to a report, but we haven't got the initial report, which I think maybe we should do in the future. But I think we, we, there's a learning point. Yeah. I so, just said the report to Graham Watts after the meeting. Okay. So, that's it, it hasn't happened this morning. Well, we, we've, we've got a, a new Graham Watts, but there may have been some <laughs> um, handover issue. Um, so, um, if, if I can take um, Councillor Hickford's contribution, and then I think I just want to um, uh, discuss the issues that have been raised that are in front of us from the, the Assembly and from your contribution both to the Assembly and today on issues relating to the Western Orbital. Um, thank you Chair. The first thing I'd like to, to ask officers is because it keeps coming up in something I brought up before as well as the timings of the release of papers because I do think it's difficult for LLS to meet who then obviously want to integrate their thoughts with the Assembly and then it comes on for another week or two weeks to the board. Is there some way that we can actually time this a bit better for so, all the LLF? So this is the request that Alan Bradbury made that the LLF meets at least two weeks before the assembly meeting. Well, the papers are available, so we can meet. Yeah. Like the okay, so, so in terms of an action point, we will follow up the timings to ensure that the LLF does have that timing. Subject to a decision by Cambridge County Council on Tuesday, the timings for publishing papers will be extended. At the moment, they have to be at least five clear working days before the Joint Assembly. If all the changes are agreed on Tuesday, then it would be seven clear working days. So that would provide quite a bit of time. Yeah. Just maybe on fourteen. <laughs> well, I think the the. the Sometimes we do have quite a lot of work going on in terms of finishing off projects and schemes and drawing together reports. So we, we are going to have at least seven working days. So we, I think what we've got is we do have time scales for the rest of the year. We know when items that have an impact on your local liaison forum are coming forward. So we just have to get the dates into the diaries. Okay. Um, Councillor Hickford, so that was that issue and then there's um, several issues but there may be additional issues that, you, that were raised at the Assembly which I'll then open up for discussion at the board. Yeah, can I also ask the county, is Councillor Smith coming in on this at all? When I'm invited. Right. Okay, yes. specifically about cost, I was going to ask. Yeah, uh, okay. Yes, yes, uh, with a slightly di with a, with a somewhat different viewpoint to what I put at the assembly because I realised I was wrong. Okay. Sure you so, it, it, the, the first issue I think that we just I, I'd like the board's view in on is that we've obviously had a we've got a discussion here and we've got some recommendations to take it forward, but we've got we've got three sets of issues. We've got issues in relation to the need for the Western Orbital. We've got issues in relation to um, uh, junctions and we've got issues in relation to park and ride provision. So uh, in a way I'd like to just take the principal issue first about the need for the Western Orbital and some of the issues raised 
both by the officer analysis in the consultation, by the LLF and the assembly. So is there anything, um, Councillor Hickford, you want to add in terms of the um, principle of the Western Orders and, and its need? And, and that may spill into whether or not it's on-road or off-road. I mean, I'm going to come back, it depends um, what, what's said in the future. Many of things have been picked up. There's lots of good discussion um, with the Assembly and many good points put forward. What I will say is that I don't always take a vote of the Assembly, but I did on this occasion, and the Assembly voted um, 12 in favour with one abstention for the actual um, revised recommendations that you have in front of you. So um, there wasn't um, so much uh, against that. But the one thing that I will pick up on, which is included in the revised recommendations, is um, that it's, it was felt it was vital to integrate um, potential highways England plans with the city build plans and aspirations, and in particular the Burton Interchange, which keeps cropping up time and time and time again as to what could or could not be done on that, and are there any plans for it, and how the city builds going to deal with it, and every time it comes up the city build, it's a highways England issue, etc. At the assembly, we actually um, asked officers to invite highways England to. Uh, an available assembly so that we could actually ask questions ourselves, um, which the officers agreed to do, and hopefully will actually happen. Um, there was also concern about the evidence report, and we had touched on that. And it's my understanding that this was made public, um, or it was in the public domain, I should say, but it wasn't actually widely recognised as being in the public domain. We have heard from officers that it wouldn't make much difference to recommendations, but I think it's vital that any report like this, as um, the chair of the other has said, any report like this um, that comes forward should be made uh, not only public, but actually big arrows pointing to it to make sure everyone knows about it in the future. I'm not going to touch on the Boston interchange because what I might report from the assembly obviously isn't quite what. Councillor Smith's going to be called now, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen on that one. Um, so if I'm made chair, I'll leave it at the moment. If I have to come in later, I'll, I'll make a, a sign. Well, it, I've, um, I, I, I've, given, these, I've given some thought to the recommendations, and I'm not aware of whether any changes that you added, um, other than the proposal that, the, that I was in that were invited to um, an assembly meeting. Um, that wasn't part of the recommendations, it was just an aspiration from the Assembly, so we actually agree with recommendations as per. Okay, all right. So the, uh, what I would then seek is comments from members of the board about the um, principle of the Western Orbital, um, and then I'll obviously contribute to that as well. Councillor Bates? Could we actually address the issue with uh, Highways England, and I think we do need to work with Highways England. Uh, because they are integral to what we're discussing with the Western Orbital, and all those actually link, uh, link together, those two particular. So uh, I'm welcome to the reading, um, and thank you for that change. I think the remodeling of the Earth need to change, um, I think just to remind maybe the public that, of course, that was part of the uh, poems in the when the inspectors came. and. Uh, Lots of discussion at the public inquiry on that, but I think it would be useful to um, follow on from what the assembly says, which is to invite OAs England to come. I would perhaps want to extend it a little bit more, not just the assembly, but to uh, all members and, and other interested parties as well. I think because we're all interested in what the views might be of OAs England uh, and also about what the plans, if any, for the term needs to change. So I think, and, and also with the particular junctions. 13. So, in the principles of the consultation, I did it, attend one of the exhibitions, by the way, um, when all the displays were, uh, were up, and, and there were a lot of people there with a lot of interest, and a lot of people were interested about what would happen, particularly in relationship to uh, cycle park, park and ride, cycle park as well as where park and rides might be. So, uh, I think uh, there has been a lot of interest, and that's reported reported in the report. So the principles, I think, are sound in that we want to do something, we want to prepare ourselves for trans one need to trans two, because that's obviously where we will, will fit in financially. So I think actually it's important for us to carry on with this work, 
liaise with uh, OAC and uh, seek some further clarification about what their views are for, for the future. But in principle, I agree with the recommendations as laid out. And predominantly, what I heard at the assembly, I did attend the assembly and listen. Okay. So, in terms of the um, the reworked recommendation that I've uh, put in front of the board. Um, it is to follow up that there needs to be a, a dialogue and obviously some of the exchange would be assisted if officers in advance can clarify what Pyrus England uh, has as their current position that there isn't any short term need particularly if we can win the managed motorway extension to effectively three lane working between junctions 11 and 13 and beyond for an off-road solution and therefore there's no immediate case for the board to support an off-road solution as for the Western Orbital. Um, but that we need to have this discussion to determine um, how we can win the managed motorway because it's not currently um, stated as a highways England priority. So along with um, the MPs as well, given their potential influence and also the opportunity of working with the devolution arrangements. Um, we, we, we seek to persuade uh, Highways England of the virtues of, of expanding the on-road capacity, which would then enable there to be sufficient capacity for buses to, to work both ways. Um, that then raises issues of junctions, uh, which include buses coming north off Junction 11 as well as going south. Um, and it also adds in um, a discussion on the remodelling of potential of the Gurn interchange, albeit that in terms of expense, that is not just a Highways England des decision, that's a strategic government funding decision. So that, that's the basis. Uh, um, do you want to add anything to that, Councillor Boker? Yeah, I've got lots of questions for Chris. So, can I ask Mr. Biggs, can I just go back to basics? Can you just remind us of why we're doing the Western Orbital? And I don't mean that it's such a stupid question, because when I go to the next agenda item and go on to page 85, paragraph 4, it says there is insufficient evidence for long-term sustainable bus routes. And on the end of that, presumably, in your next paper, which is going to argue against a slipper at the junction. And so I'm getting confused about, on the one hand, I'm being told we have to do the Western North and then I've been told there's insufficient evidence of long-term buses. So can we just go back why we're doing the Western Orbital? Are there, or are there not going to be buses going around it? <coughs> Chair, I think if, if, we, if we do go back, of course, the Western Orbital is not a tranche one scheme. So in the assessment of schemes to be built in the first five years, this wasn't included. Um, the board asked us to do further work on it because we saw the synergies, uh, as, as, as Comrade has pointed out, between that and the, the, the kind of Cambridge corridor. Um, so we brought that forward as part of that. The difference between the Western Orbital and the M11 Junction Web is the M11 Junction Web the next paper just deals with buses going one way, one junction. Um, hence our recommendations based solely on the fact that we have facility for buses going one way from one junction without solving the rest of it, it's going to be very challenging to get a reliable bus service. Clearly with the rest of the orbital, the, the work so far is showing that with a, a clear uh, uh, uninterrupted route for buses that links to the park and ride sites on a number of different radio routes, brings in the people from Pappas and Camborne to the Armentville campus, it actually starts looking better. In other words, you do more. You solve more problems, you get a better result. Is that clear? Yeah, so there is evidence that there will be long term sustainable bus journeys along the other. Uh, yes, I can't say that there would not be some level of subsidy, but clearly part of the discussion about that actually an earlier question is about the overall strategy for bus services and what the high quality bus service looks like. And one of the issues is about, uh, and in terms of other things, the city are considering about what is parking maybe, using some of that money to fill in the gaps in the commercial network, such as all of the bus services. And I will leave this particular line of inquiry in a moment, but if there is evidence of long-term sustainable bus routes around the other aren't quite a lot of them, they come off 
at the biological council's junction. Depends on how you find quite a lot of them, but um, the equally there could be buses coming, for example, from the Park and Ride or Barton Road that use the, the Cameron and Cambridge busway to get to Cambridge. So there's an awful lot of different potential different options get open up by that Western Old Dublin for buses going in different directions in different ways. But I come back to the point that just open slip road for one bus in one direction as a standalone project struggles. Okay, so it's nice. well, we'll talk about that one in a moment. But basically, we're doing the Western Old Dublin to get buses back and forth. Can you help me understand more about managed motorways? Uh, whether you think the managed motorway would be the panacea that we want, I hope the answer is yes, but whether it is the panacea that we want, how Highways England works, because I think if I'm right, they work in sort of five-year units, uh, which five-year units we will definitely not be in, which five-year unit we have a chance of being in, and which five-year unit we have next week. You just, so, so, uh, because what we're sort of working our way towards, I think, and I'm, and I'm fully in favour of this, I just want to check it, is that the managed motorway solution um, sort of sorts out the carriageway bit of, uh, you know, for a decent while. Um, uh, not junctions, but the carriageway bit, and ob probably obviates the need for an off-road solution. So just trying to work out what, in your professional judgment, you view as a managed motorway is a good thing, and which five-year unit should we be Lobbying with the MPs to get into. I think that's probably the easiest, and we've set out on page 7, on page 721, B there. We absolutely write the, uh, the highways in the have a five year plan approach, what we call a um, uh, smooth investment strategy, a little bit too far from all the net, smooth investment strategy. During the current five year investment strategy, they will be investing in new signage on the M11 because it has the old matrix type signs but no changes to uh, the allocation. They will be drawing up the next route investment strategy that's from 20 years, that's from 2020 onwards and uh, through next year they've said to us there's an opportunity there to engage, to respond, to put forward our needs. In terms of the overall assessment of the whole motorway network where the pressure points are, their kind of thinking is this is probably not candidate for managing motorway perhaps for the down the M11 might be, but they're open to a great discussion on that. So next year 2017 is the time to engage on that. So that sets a timetable for that. So it would be time to start having a start with them. I think it would be a thank you. Well we're talking about time So we should do our engagement that we're gonna think about during 2017 to hope to get into the period 2020 to 25, and if we vote on this sort of resolution, would you help us in how we engage with month we engage? You know, to do you know, do we need some resolutions here? Would that help uh, our most effective engagement? I don't want just to pass a resolution and then sort of forget about it. Do you have any idea of which month and how we go about and all of that? Is there a public? Is there a public? process, etc. Is it behind closed doors? How do we engage? Well, we discussed this about the very specific information on the time scale that just the 2017 they would be consulting on the next route investment strategy that we could propose to government for acceptance in 2019. So we can ask that question of them. We certainly accept the meetings themselves. I was in, you can ask that question of them as well. But the moment there's no further information other than 2017 would be the time to engage with them. So I'm going to ask Tanya on our next progress report. We just have a memo item that if we've got any feedback from Highways England on its timetable and its process for engagement, we just keep reminding ourselves through the progress report. I think it's unlikely that there will be much more to report next progress report because it's due to be published on the 6th of January, so with Christmas they probably won't rush the same. But I expect something more meaningful for March. Well, I think the other is once we pass the, if we pass the recommendation, then we'll set up the meeting, and then that will be part of our progress. And then the, is a managed motorway a panacea? Um, I have to be honest and say, be very careful, and we need to think about that very carefully, because a managed motorway allows more people to drive around Cambridge, which may be a good thing until they try and drive into Cambridge. 
uh, equally expand the capacity of the Port of Junction to maybe a good thing until we can offer the Junction onto our road network. So I think we have to understand very carefully what kind of motor we might deliver. And we've, we've talked, I was in about cleaning busting and power show when they said I was to go to that. And um, clearly that would mean the existing capacity of those days as it is, but we have to use our shoulder for busting. And um, they're not happy with that idea at all. But, but, but that presumably is an issue at least we can argue with them about because clearly if you've got three lanes on that western motorway you can seek to uh, see if they open their eyes to better use of the third lane. I, I think that's absolutely right. In terms of the modal shift for getting people out of cars on the buses, we would certainly see that as a better option than actually creating a situation where more people could drive down the motorway. An awful lot of the trips on the M11 actually quite the local trips between one or two junctions and another. So have they said absolutely not use the hard shoulder over my dead body? Or should we be adding to 3A, you know, a higher management or use the hard shoulder? Or have they just said over our dead body? Pretty much. Well, they're not dead yet, but, um, but we, we can certainly raise it. And I think um, whether or not we change the wording, I think that certainly our purpose is to um, enable public transport to get along this route. So thank you. Can I just move us on to page two of the sort of revised um, report, paragraph seven? because what we're being asked to do is to agree the next steps as set out in this report and paragraph is the next steps as set out in this report um, which is we're going to propose to come back in July number one to talk about how it might think of Camel's Cambridge busway um, what does number two mean? Could we could save park and ride for the moment because I want to get Councillor Smith in and I want to basically just what we'll do. I want, I'd like to exhaust the discussion on um, on the capacity of the M11 first. Okay, so I'll ask that question that way. The, should we be doing some work now that says if we get a managed motorway at some stage, what would we be then doing at some of the junctions? It, the, 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 the thing that's really confusing me is the shorter term options in 7.2. Um, I don't know what short means in the next six months. Or shouldn't we be saying, just out of interest, if we get the management away and if we decide it's a sensible panacea, you know, then what would we do in the long term? Because otherwise, we'll wait two or three years to hear about management away and only then think about what we do with junctions as a result of getting the match ratio. I don't really want to have to wait three years. So how, how are we going to, in other words, can we anticipate the match ratio and decide what we might do? Right now, there's no funds for that. I'm not sure if I can tell you for that. Yeah. What I mean is, we're just going to sort of do nothing for the next six months. That's all we're going to think about what we might do if we get the management away eventually. Well, not to do nothing for the next six months, but I'm going to continue to work on the options. One of which may be a problem in my And we can do some work. We want to get a management away and we can get the implications of management away. We're not in a position to proceed to any discussion or sensible decisions about anything off-road until we've exhausted on-road. So the discussion about the managed motorway is to thrash through those issues in both impact, time scale, value for public transport and other issues in terms of the capacity. I'm confused. So are we going to spend money on investigating the off-road route? That seems a waste of money. Or did I hear wrongly? I think what we're saying is only strategically in terms of assessing the links with the A forty eight scheme and sort of I mean, there's obviously an element here potential retrofitting, so that there will be some good consideration 
should the online solution be seen as a short term option, what the impact would be uh, off road, should an off road solution become available later on. So, so really there does need to be a continued um, assessment of the different options um, in order that at the point, at any point when the board does want to make a decision, we've got the full facts at hand. So high level analysis, nothing in terms of detail or significant cost? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Bates, any issues to raise on this part? I was going to return to manage those ways. There are other parts of the country that have introduced them. They're often uh, only done at peak times, not, not what I call uh, you know, out of peak times. Um, it does need to be kept. <coughs> they are operated in other places. I was also going to make a suggestion because if you're looking about the M11, uh, it's not that far down the end of it before you get uh, Essex. And Essex may have a view as well in respect to managed motorways further down the area towards Harlow Enterprise Zone and Harlow itself. Um, and I think we need to, if I join up with our colleagues in Essex to see their views on managed motorways uh, prior to us meeting Highways England. Um, so I think that would be a, a sensible approach as well because they, they are suspected, if they're opposed to it and we are uh, in favour of it, we never really want to, uh, I think, disagree at this early stage, so I would suggest that we uh, talk to Essex County Council on that matter, um, but also there are opportunities that where it is, has been introduced in other parts of the country, but it is only at peak times. Okay. Alright, well, I, I take where we're at on that as in principle support for the discussion that we want to have um, on managed motorways, but we, we in the Assembly also need to, in uh, Councillor Hickford, <coughs> along with input from the local liaison forums and others, inform ourselves better about the options, including peak time use, potential use, um, and a discussion that we want to have about how the three lanes could be better used. Okay, so um, I'll take the point that we're at there, but and now open up the issues on park and rides. So if Councillor Smith, you want to come in now, then Councillor Hickford might add to that. Um, yes, can I just come back on a couple of these points? Because I don't feel actually that you have um, answered the main question that I asked in, in, in my report. I know you didn't get it in advance, so there's some problem with it. So, the first, the, the two main things I wanted is that um, one, an assessment made of the LLF hybrid option, because um, we don't feel that a good on road option, a feasible, valid on road option, has ever been properly assessed. And you just said yourself with regard to the M11 motorway that you want all on-road options um, thoroughly looked at before you look at off-road. And it seems in the case of the A428, we've gone headlong into making a preferred option. Sorry, sorry, uh, Helen, we, we, do not, we do not have this on our agenda today. Yeah, the agenda is a discussion about the Western Orbital. But, but we, the board has not had any papers about the A428. It isn't an agenda item today. Actually, be, be you actually said last time to Councillor Fox that um, that this had never been done, and you accepted it. And it just seems incredible that we go forward with no on-road option that can be achieved ever having been looked at. And we, and we have one that we've given, we we came and we we gave it to you in your October meeting. And again, it's just kind of such a little bit forgotten. And that's all we're asking. That can we just have somebody do these strategic assessments? Of, Actually, Helen can come in. We, we, the, the, the work that was being done on the topographical survey and the uh, assessment hasn't been completed yet. Um, Ashley, Helen. You can say to some about it. You could know, use the current A428 and slip roads there. Can I ask Ashley, Helen, to respond, please? Yeah, I think really, uh, James, maybe as well, saying you've really instructed us to look at a alternative um, segregated route alongside the Madini Hill, um, which obviously needs to be keen to a wider um, segregated solution from Cambridge, Cambridge to Cambridge. And that's what we're doing. We've undertaken a topographical survey. We've provided that survey to, um, to Helen, 
And what we are now doing is, um, for the process in the new year, we will undertake some prelim design exercises. So my understanding would be that um, if um, those prelim design exercises do demonstrate um, feasible uh, segregated end to end options which can go alongside the existing highway, then clearly that would lead one to want to do further assessment. But given we're not at that stage yet, I think it would be um, it simply uh, it would be preemptive to say that there should be a full assessment and option that hasn't been feasibility tested. Um, as Councillor Burke said, we do want to increase the interim stages that are listed in terms of the progress report, but we're not here to discuss the A4 today. I know that. With the, with the calendar of the fourth, forthcoming calendar, I couldn't come back and discuss it in, until July, and that's when we're making the decisions. Well, we, we obviously, we, then if you, we knew that you were coming to discuss the A428, we could have considered the issues and then we could have had a discussion. But you didn't raise with the board that you wanted to discuss the A428 today. Well, I did raise it during assembly and I was expecting that you would have got the Can you show it?
could help deliver um, a really, really exciting Fox and Level Crossing interchange project. And we would hope that the City Deal would be able to uh, commit its support to that, financial support. Um, we do not accept the arguments that were put at the Assembly for not citing park and ride sites at a distance from the city. We don't think it was adequately addressed. And we include here Scotland Farm as well. This is a generic statement. The principal argument against was that they were actually more expensive. But what that actually boils <coughs> down to is that the bus journeys are longer and therefore costlier. Robert Blues already talked today about the importance of doing some work to identify what a quality bus service would be, would be like, and he focused on speed, reliability, and cost. So I don't think we should just be assuming that an increased cost would prohibit people from using a high quality service. The benefits of a shorter car journey and no congestion may well outweigh the cost of a higher bus service bus ticket charge. So the arguments for um, four include intercepting traffic before congestion start, starts, as well as actually potentially, and this is where you know, slightly new idea here, providing the bus services for some of those villages which currently have none. This could in reality double as a cycle and ride site, allowing people in the villages to cycle an acceptable distance to a site um, a hub, a park ride, whatever, where they can actually then get on the bus. So we haven't talked about cycle and ride yet, but there is an opportunity there to do something that's just a bit different and is actually very focused on benefiting people living in rural South Cambridgeshire who do not have any money, who have, have no chance, regardless of how much money is generated by uh, the work-based parking that you're actually getting buses. You're certainly not going to be seeing that in Camden here. So we believe that the arguments for um, remoter park and ride sites have not really been heard, and there does indeed appear to be a degree of predetermination operating in, with regard to park and, uh, park and ride facilities. Um, we know that since October, since the October board meeting, officers have visited Crown B at Adelie Marsh, but no one's actually contacted the owner of Scotland Farm for 11 months. So we'd like assurance from the board that locations further out will be assessed and given equal weight. So the fifth recommendation is that park and ride sites uh, are located before congestion starts and at points where interconnection with other infrastructure is good and they're accessible to a wide number of villages. So um, in terms of the Western Northern sort of park and rides, council days. In response to the points that yeah, the, the it's a question really to uh, Bridget. When you say further out, can you please clarify what you mean further out? I mean, I know we're trumpeting this, I know we're doing these, etc., etc. So when you're talking about further out, where's further out in your view? Well, it's before the congestion starts, basically. Which it currently isn't the case. I mean, you're queued to get into a park and ride at the moment. That's what you can get into. You can't get into that at the moment because it's on the contractors. Um, but yes, so, you know, before, before the congestion starts. So obviously, not, you know, I, mean, I think the one at Plymouth, I think the one at Plymouth is about 30 miles outside. But, you know, we're not as rural as, as Devon. But, you know, it could be further out and it could then be located. So that you know, people in the villages, some you know, villages within a five hour radius, could get on their bikes and cycle there and get on the bus. I'm not saying it's the right idea, but I think I'd like you to think about it. Councillor Burkett, no, you've raised several issues that we need to think about and review. Um, and I think before I take you, Councillor Burkett, I think Councillor Hinton wants to talk about parking rights. It's, it's just a very quick one, if I may, Chair, and there was much discussion on this. And, and the, the uh, underlying theme was the enormity of the task that the city deal actually faces in trying to get the mobile shift uh, from car to, to bus or other forms of public transport, etc. And there were some figures um, put before the assembly by an assembly member, I won't go into um, in detail, um, but basically uh, the end result was, you know, if, if we took it to the first stream, that each park and ride would have to case for an extra 5,000 cars a day. Um, obviously, there are unmitigated circumstances as to why that won't be the absolute figure, hopefully. Um, 
Um, there was this, this underlying theme of, of, you know, have we, have we actually appreciated the enormity of what we're trying to do here, especially with the population growth that's, that's being considered. There was also some concern over the consultation um, and whether the actual uh, people involved in the consultation were representative. Um, it, I will just say that in passing, um, I, I don't have an answer myself on that one, but there was some concern. Um, there was also concern about uh, whether there was enough evidence based on traffic flows, etc., um, to actually get to where parking lights should actually be placed. Um, but I'll leave it at that. I think there's been a lot said on this so far. Okay. Um, there's clearly a, in the consultation also responses on both the Boxton location and also on Martin Road, which officers need to take account of in planning the parking lights strategy. Councillor Birkin. I think you made four points, if I can disaggregate them, and I broadly speaking agree with all of them. Um, I think you made a general point, um, Councillor Smith, you called them sort of rural park and rides or travel hubs, whatever you call them. Um, I think you make a general point, and then I think you make a specific point about three locations, which I'll talk about Trumpeton, Foxton, and Maddie Hill slash Scotland Farm. I think that's sort of fair, probably a summary of what I'm saying. As a general point, um, I rather agree with you on having more, let's call them travel huts, uh, mini park and rides, etc., dotted around the district. And I'm at fault here because you probably remember as a portfolio holder for South Cans, in my South Cans capacity, I wrote to uh, all the chairs of the parish councils back in the summer and wondered if they wanted to suggest locations. And I got, funny enough, I think I've got 110 parishes or something like that, I got remarkably few responses, I've got about 15. Um, uh, but they are quite interesting, and I have summarised them, and I have failed to bring them um, to the public domain, I'm afraid, and onto this, um, well, because I can't quite work out how to do so, because it was a private initiative of the South Cam's councillor, and I'm told it wasn't a, City Deal initiative me wearing my other hat, and I haven't worked out how to get it onto the agenda. Perhaps I would just put it on the South County website and be done with it. But what it basically says is that there were half a dozen places, there were fewer places than I thought, because I mean, we can't sort of impose one on our villages if they don't want one. But um, surprise, surprise, uh, there's quite a lot of demand for them near, um, near and along the existing kind of busway. I'll, I'll try and put this on the website. Um, and down the A10. In other words, people obviously do want to get on to, to, to cycle or drive a short distance to join an existing corridor like the guided bus corridor or the A10 railway corridor. That's the sort of thing. So I basically agree with you that we should do more work on rural traffic uh, transport hubs. Um, the problem is we haven't voted any transplant money for it, but I am sort of working in my mind whether next year we could use some of our other pot of money, do you remember this um, new age bonus pot of money to commission that, so I think we should sort of work together on that one. If I talk about your three locations, we talk about Trumpington first. Is the Trumpington Residence Association a member of your LLF? They are, they have a We haven't, we haven't seen them. We have seen them, and I'm sure they have, you know, something, something to say. Um, but you know, the park and ride is already there, and this is actually a very urban area. So you know, it lacks the sensitivities of the likes of Hawkston. You probably saw me flicking through my emails, wasn't I? I wasn't listening to you. I was trying to find the letter that they wrote me, um, and I may be completely and utterly wrong, but I think they have a directly opposite view okay. to what you do. I think they said to me, and I, the reason I don't quite remember it wasn't actually on our agenda for today, I think they would much prefer the Hawkson side than the Trumpeton side. So, firstly, <laughs> your, you know, your, your, your local liaison forum may not be taking enough account of the people who are most local to it. Uh, and also, I think this does highlight the problem we all face, particularly us at this end of the table as decision makers, when you get two directly opposing views. But your wider point must be correct, that I think we're all beginning to say that possibly during the course of next year, somehow, ways the city deal should focus on the entirety of 
the Trumpington slash biomedical cannabis area. And not limited to just sort of this part of the ride. And it's probably my fault for looking at this slipway, um, bus in slipway. But you know, there's 30 or 40,000 people working there. It's a traffic nightmare. We've got opportunities with an M11, with Cambridge South, with that big fantastic railway station, with um, a guided busway goes through there, and possibly that entire area should become like a focus area. So um, hold that thought, I don't know how we get there, but I agree with that. Uh, further down, Foxton. Um, yes, Foxton must be uh, a focus area as well. I think it seems really disappointing that we all, we put this, if I'm right, in a tranche one or tranche two scheme, but we put it with zero budget because we thought network rail will get the pay for a substantial amount of improvements. So we've already said that we want to do it, but we've got a problem. Now, there are quite a few more conversations going on behind the scenes with network rail, and then the MPs getting involved and things like that. But I think, again, Foxton, as a generality, perhaps should be a focus area for the city deal next year. I don't know how we'll do it or the year after, because it would make sense, it seems to me, to have a transport hub down there. Uh, I don't know what the local residents would think, uh, but I can't remember what's the statistic. 122,000 cars cross 400 trains every year, day, there, or something like that. You know, that needs to be a focus. And the third thing I'm going to say in this rather long speech, which I apologise, is over at Madden and March, we must, must, must um, compare Brimley to Scotland Farm on a genuine, open basis. I was reading the uh, Atkins report, I think, on Crane, the uh, Madden and March area the other day. It didn't have the word environment in it at all, mm -hmm. it seemed to be. It was all done on technical grounds and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So um, I will be pretty hot on making sure that it is a genuine comparison of the two locations during the course of next year. So a long answer, but I, I agree with a lot of what you say. If I just add one thing, there's an opportunity here to, you know, we're going to look at rural transport hubs to have shuttle buses running from them to Foxton and you know, creating a proper proper network. And this would be hugely beneficial to students going to sit form colleges. You currently have absolutely no choice but to drive in from up to South Cambridgeshire. So if we you know we set up these you know um, cycle and park park and ride, whatever we call them, you know, rural rural hubs, but have a network of shuttle buses, which I know is part of Council of Antonens thinking, going to Boxton to make the most of the fact that we're going to see a quadrupling of trains going through that station now, never mind once we have a varsity line. You know, there's a huge opportunity here to really make a significant difference. And this is exactly the sort of thing that will drive that elusive local shift. So the chairman quite rightly says we must get back to West Norfolk. But I'll quickly say, firstly, if you have a station at Cambridge South, it's not too far for a student to walk from Cambridge South to Long Road Sixth Form College, which would be very interesting. Um, and I can't remember the second point. Just say I was right. It would be nice. <laughs> bus, rural bus services. It's exactly yeah, what would be very, but someone's got to pay for those because they will be deeply, 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 deeply unprofitable, I think. Um, Mr. Ming is, is, is nodding, and so that is one reason I think the workplace parking levy is very, very interesting indeed, because someone will have to pay for the rural buses. Councillor Banks. I was only going to refer uh, both Bridget and Penny to the <coughs> Cambridge County Council website. I would suggest you look at the Total Transport Project, which the county are actually piloting in the East Hands, which is certainly a pilot which if, if successful will be rolled out across the county, which obviously looks very much about these counties are very rural, and similar to South Cairns and other parts of the county, perhaps I would direct you to have a look at what they're doing there already. The pilot is under running, is it the Aki? Initially, we were very successful in that, in that pilot that we have. Sorry. So, I refer you to that now, that it please, and that may assist your peers on the perspective of uh, Okay, in terms of what, what was in the West of Norfolk for consultation on park and rides, there was a park and cycle proposal on Park and Road, and there was also a discussion about the um, location of the, uh, particularly the Junction 11 park and ride capacity. And as Councillor Burkett has said, we've had a letter as board members from the Trumpington Residents Association, which 
prefers the Hawkston location <coughs> and uh, is not in support of double decking the uh, Trumpington side, which is an option. So, so I think the uh, the officers have rightly not come to firm conclusions on a number of those points. Um, but we clearly do need to have um, a decision um, coming forward on what we're going to do at Trumpington. But that isn't in front of us today. And in terms of the point on where we're going on travel hubs, we, we have got the item on tranche two, and I just think that that is clearly <coughs> an element of being broader minded about um, the options, which inevitably focused in the first five years on the challenges on the edges of Cambridge, and now can uh, take it forward. So, in terms of where we go on the responses and the issues that you both raised, um, if you haven't had a written response, we'll get you one early next week and get you a response before we have the opportunity to meet up. Okay? Thank you very much for your Okay, time. thank you. So, in terms of the park and ride issues, we, we, we um, unless um, Bob Lingus you want to add anything, um, we, we haven't got any active proposal at this stage on either Barton Road um, or on Trumpington, but we will be coming back on the, particularly on the Trumpington proposal. Uh, yeah, I guess it's what all, all of this proposal, sure. Okay, so I've um, got nothing more to add other than to obviously follow up a number of the issues um, that were raised by Bridget Smith. Um, and then we come to the issue of junctions, and I think we leave uh, that discussion for the next item. Okay, so I'm going to propose that we well, we, 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 we've obviously got a number of issues underneath this recommendation, which include um, how we put our case across to Highways England about what the potential use is of the extra capacity, whether it's peak time and, and how it is used. But there is clearly capacity in the M11 to the west of Cambridge, which is unused at the moment, um, and managed uh, cleverly and without generating significant shift to cars, we can, obviously, we can um, uh, link that to junction improvements. So I've got the recommendations in front of us for um, this item. Are there any other points before um, I would put those to the vote? Okay, well, can I see those in favour of the recommendations? <coughs> what I'm gonna do is, is, is take the amendment first. All those in favour of the amendment which is involved, including to seek a discussion with Highways England over Girton Interchange. And, uh, and then there's none against. And, and before I put that final point to the vote, I just make one comment on the Girton Interchange, and that is in some ways our best opportunity is actually working with the National Infrastructure Commission because that has the ear of government. Um, as we saw from their report in October, that then went straight into the budget statement. So, in addition to the discussion with Highways England, we want to have a discussion both with um, Transport Ministers and the National Infrastructure Commission, um, because that is probably our shortest route to getting a government commitment um, to evaluate first and, and then work towards a potential scheme for the government interchange. But we should we keep it also for discussion with Highways England. That's a very important point, Highways England and Um, well, I, I think we, we certainly, um, we want, uh, I, I'm not going to make it a recommendation, but I just think we note that these issues, including the smaller issues, um, will also be raised with, um, with the National Infrastructure Commission. But the main focus is on the Girton Interchange because that is a potential uh, budget item in the realms of 200 million plus. Okay. I can move the recommendations as on that paper with the amendment. All those in favour? Thank you. So that's approved. Thank you for your input, Helen, Brian, and also Councillor Smith. Um, uh, the, the, the dialogue on the A428 will continue and um, uh, we'll respond to the issues that were raised, which we have got in front of us, and we'll make sure you get that before we meet up. Okay? Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Hickman. Right, we move on to item nine. Um, so the next item is uh, the junction at uh, junction 11.
um, and uh, issues in relation to the um, investigation of the slip road. Um, uh, Ashley Heller, or oh, sorry, we've got Bob Minnis. Bob Minnis is going to introduce this, and then I'll ask Roger Hickford um, for an input from the assembly. What's Bob? So Ashley's had to go. He's got to uh, pick his daughter up. He's had, he's had to leave. He's better informed than I am. I will do my best. Uh, you well, you've tested your answer to the full now. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to pretend to know everything. Uh, if we get into too much of these, I mean to uh, get us to come back to your points. I, I shall be very brief uh, if I can say that. Obviously, we've asked Luke as a separate uh, project to the Western Oracle, specifically at this junction location. Uh, we've looked at the junction. There are four options that we have looked at, um, which are varying um, uh, utility and benefits to them. But the overall conclusion we have, we have come to all of them in that there is not currently a bus service using this route. There are um, offers to get financial support to bus service, but they have time to That actually, as a standalone scheme, doesn't really stack up because it's only getting bus off at the M11 junction. The bus at the junction of the bus is going back up the M11, so it will have to be taken back to the start of this route to get stuck in all the traffic on the M11 junction 13. Uh, it, it doesn't actually achieve very much as a standalone project to what I've already touched, touched on. So our recommendation is that it should actually be uh, put back in from the Western Alpha project and brought forward as part of the Western Alpha project rather than as a standalone scheme. Um, Councillor Hickford. Uh, thank you, Chairman. This was relatively easy for the Assembly because we'd already considered it before and about integrating uh, this slip road into the Western Mortal Scheme and had recommended this to the board and obviously it was uh, all, all different and it's come back again. So uh, needless to say there, there was support um, again to integrate into the Western Mortal Scheme. There was uh, some members um, who thought that we should uh, push on as originally, I think about two years ago when we first spoke about it, push on and actually uh, try and actually achieve the project and uh, see it as a sort of test case. Uh, that was from one member. Um, business as well, business members on the assembly um, were actually in favour of pushing on with this um, for various reasons. One of them being um, that AstraZeneca uh, had already had 2,000 additional employees located um, with more to come, etc., and would we'll be using that particular bus route. Uh, but the overall majority of support was to integrate it into this nautical scheme. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, well, uh, any comments? Councillor Burke? Well, everyone knows I've been pretty keen on this, but I'm feeling that the consensus is against me. Uh, I think the wider point is that we're building the biomedical campus and we're not doing anything really to improve the transport arrangements, getting into it. I know the guided bus goes into it. And I know we want to do something in the future, and we want to build Cambridge South Station in the future, and we are going to integrate this slip road into the wider view. But, but the employees are getting there right now, and they're going to arrive next year in greater force. And actually, we're not, we've got no concrete plans whatsoever. And I'm increasingly getting worried that we're failing the people who work there, <coughs> probably the people who are ill and trying to get there. And so um, I'm going to accept the recommendation because we operate by consensus and the consensus is, is against me. But I think I'll just ask Mr. Mingus and officers that we really, we really have got to progress this during 2017, I think. And we have got to come up with a solution that doesn't depend on waiting for the um, um, highways in the wonder if the uh, management is in 2025 or something like that. But we have got to get a solution for the whole area that that sorts out that area. Because I have a real fear that in about four or five years' time, or possibly even sooner, it's just going to be an absolute gridlock. And I, I think we need to get on with it pretty, pretty sharpish in 2017 and come up with some coherent plans for the area. I, I, I have one specific question because um, it, it wasn't part of this, but I think it, it matters in terms of the uh, deliverability of this um, bus improvement, and that is 
what what has been the thinking, um, Mr. Mingus, with the highways, with Highways England about getting buses back on north? Does that, do they have to go via the roundabout, or has there been any thought given to potentially a route that takes buses over and then onto the northbound M11? Actually, I'm going to answer that question. To the best of my knowledge, there hasn't been any discussion of that because this was purely a specific project about an off slick at this junction. And certainly, the details of that have been discussed with Highways I mean, the, the, the reason I raise it is that, um, that along with the leader of South Cambridge, we recently had a meeting with the biomedical campus, with the university, with the hospital, and with other partners, including Papworth. And again, they've given us a letter, but it only arrived in the last day. So what I plan to do is just share that discussion. I think some of the issues about modal shift in that area are partly over to the operators of the site as well. In the, at the moment, we've got a very car-based site, um, um, and we need to work to reduce that. There are also other issues, including the enforcing of the through traffic route, which until recently the police have not been helping enforce and I just wondered if there's any progress has been made on that because some of the reasons why this area generates a lot of traffic or certainly the area into the biomedical campus are because the planned enforcement of a no through road um, has taken a very long time. Do we have any update on that? I need us to that question if we're going to get to that. I understand that essentially it's enforcement as a private road network it's not an act of the county council. <coughs> yeah. But I, I understand there's been progress with the police, but I'll follow that up myself. So um, we will factor in um, responses that we just had in the last day, and certainly the biomedical campus um, and uh, Adam Brooks want to be involved um, in terms of the discussion um, about Junction 11. So, I think we make that commitment that they're, in, that they're looking for um, an acceleration um, of work on this part of the um, Western Orbital. Councillor Bates? I think just, I mean, I, I understand that the Assembly and uh, what my colleague has said. Um, I think one of the issues actually is about timing um, and to get this actually connected to the Western Orbital. But much more important than that, actually. Some of the issues which were raised at, at the assembly, which actually is, I think, in the hands of the hospital itself, and, and that actually is the charge that they actually uh, staff actually pay, and of course that's actually very low, and therefore if you've actually got uh, only had to pay about, I think it's about, I think it was two pound eighty, okay, but if you can actually pay two pound eighty to park in the car park just around the corner from where you work, you're less inclined, I suspect, to get on public 